Okay, continuing from the project we created in the last section, in our greet page, first I'm gonna delete this button. And then in the code behind, I'm also gonna remove this event handler. Now back in the XAML file, I wanna put a label on the page. So label, I wanna put it in the middle of the screen. So horizontal options, center, vertical options, center, and text, hello world. Now we can create the same UI using code instead of XAML. Let me show you how. So back in the code behind, in the constructor, after the call to initialize component, we can set the content property of our page. This property is derived from content page, which is the base class for our greet page. Now we can set this to a new label and set its properties here. So horizontal options, we set this to layout options, which is an enumeration, that's center. Similarly for vertical options, that center, and finally text. Now don't worry about this red line under initialize component. I think there's something wrong with my Xamarin Studio. Now that aside, you can see that we can create user interfaces using code as well. In this case, I'm setting the content property to a new label. And this is exactly equivalent to what we put between opening and closing tags of content page element. Now you might ask, Mosh, why do we want to create user interfaces in the code as opposed to XAML? Well, in more than 90% of the cases, we would use XAML. You would use code only if you want to add elements on a page dynamically. For example, depending on different circumstances, you may want to add a label or a button or a slider or whatnot. And all this can happen dynamically. But as I said, this is the kind of behavior that most applications don't exhibit. So all I want you to take away here is that if you want to put elements on a page dynamically, you can do it in the code. Now, why is XAML better than the code? Because it's cleaner and less noisy. Look at these properties here, horizontal options and vertical options. We're simply setting them to your string value center. Now look at the equivalent in the code. We have to prefix this value with layout options, the name of the enumeration. So there is a little bit of noise in the code. And this can get worse when you're dealing with complex hierarchical structures. In those situations, XAML is a definite winner because XML is naturally hierarchical. Now, the reality is, even when we use XAML at runtime, we have a XAML parser that reads this XAML file and it will instantiate objects, just like the code we have written here. So the exact same code will be executed by the XAML parser. Let me show you when it happens. So in the solution, I'm gonna right click the solution and set display options to show all files. If you look at the object folder under debug, we have a file here, hello world.greetpage.xaml.g, which stands for generated.cs. So this class is automatically generated for us. You can see it's a partial class, so part of that is here, and the other part is in the code behind. You can see here we have a call to initialize component method. Now you might think this method is inherited from content page, but no, it's not there. It's defined in this generated code. Look, it's here. And inside this method, we have a call to load from XAML. So when we compile our application, our XAML files are embedded in our assembly. And at runtime, when initialize component is called, this XAML file is extracted from the assembly and passed to the XAML parser. Then XAML parser will take that XAML and generate a user interface like this. All right, so for now, I'm gonna delete this code here. And we're just gonna to stick to XAML for creating user interfaces. Next, I'm gonna talk about content property.